Hi everyone, today is Tuesday, April 9th. Today is even colder than yesterday, and there was snow outside when I woke up this morning. So we are yet again postponing the flower planting until a day when it's actually nice outside. Also, I've just learned that April is National Fresh Celery Month. So, uh, go eat some fresh celery. Who comes up with this stuff? So yesterday I showed you that one of the books I have here at school with me is The Tales of Beetle the Bard by J.K. Rowling. If you don't know what that is for some reason, it's a collection of stories written by J.K. Rowling that are supposed to be fairy tales from the wizarding world. They're the stories that wizarding moms and dads would tell their kids when they were putting them to bed. And what's really great about this book is not only did she write all these stories, but then she put little notes in there after each story from Albus Dumbledore, explaining the history and symbolism and meaning behind each of the stories. And it's just, it's really clever. And I was looking at one of these afterwards written by Dumbledore. This is the one written about the Fountain of Fair Fortune, where he's talking about how some wizards didn't want this book to be read to kids because it promoted the idea that muggles were people too. And he quotes this letter written from Lucius Malfoy to the school to demand a ban on the story. It says, any work of fiction or nonfiction that depicts interbreeding between wizards and muggles should be banned from the bookshelves of Hogwarts. I do not wish my son to be influenced into sullying the purity of his bloodline by reading stories that promote wizard-muggle marriage. And it goes on to say, My refusal to remove the book from the library was backed by a majority of the Board of Governors. I wrote back to Mr. Malfoy explaining my decision. So-called pure-blood families maintain their alleged purity by disowning, banishing, or lying about muggles or muggle-borns on their family trees. They then attempt to foist their hypocrisy upon the rest of us by asking us to ban works dealing with the truths that they deny. There is not a witch or wizard in existence whose blood has not mingled with that of muggles, and I should therefore consider it both illogical and immoral to remove works dealing with the subject of our students' store of knowledge. And I really love that because one of my biggest soapboxes is banning books. When I was going through that suitcase of books yesterday, I just kind of offhandedly noted to myself that a lot of them were really commonly banned books in the United States. Now let me be clear on this. I fully believe that parents and teachers should be paying attention to what the kids are reading so we don't get like nine-year-olds reading things like Carrie by Stephen King and that adults should be also be paying attention to what they read and making informed decisions about it but what really gets my goat is when people want to ban other people from reading books just because they express opinions that they don't agree with and the other one that really gets me is when people want to stop kids from reading books that contain ideas that they think those kids aren't gonna be able to handle like bullying or character death, or racism. There's just a lot of hypocrisy and ignorance involved in the whole thing, and it just completely drives me crazy. I believe that instead of banning kids from reading To Kill a Mockingbird because it has racism and racist language in it, we should be encouraging kids to read To Kill a Mockingbird so that we can teach them about why it's wrong. I could start going into all the reasons why it makes me crazy that people want to ban Harry Potter, but that's a subject that'll probably take a little too long, so maybe I'll save that one for tomorrow. But I can tell you it's pretty clear J.K. Rowling feels the same way, based on the commentary in this book. So yeah, that's what's been on my mind today. I will see you all tomorrow.